this is uh, a terrific event. Thank you for all for, for being here. Um, in 2011, as we were celebrating uh, the 25th anniversary of the World Food Prize and the opening of this uh, building, the, uh, we had a call from uh, the Rockefeller Foundation from Gary Tennyson said that uh, they wanted to do something to honor Dr. Borlaug and that there was uh, two reasons. One was that the World Food Prize was celebrating its 25th anniversary and that Rockefeller was about to celebrate its 100th uh, anniversary. And so they uh, were going to commit uh, some money so we could have an annual prize. And I said, oh, that's very nice. And uh, you know, I thought maybe they were going to send a few thousand dollars and for a student. And they said, and we want to send you a million dollars uh, for endowment. So uh, as, uh, where's Nicole, uh, Bereka, or Mashal Hussein, who run our building, will tell you, that's why we have the defibrillators here, because they had to quickly <laughs> revive me so I, could, so I could pick up the phone and tell Gary Tennyson, yes, of course, we'll do that. Uh, so uh, we're so grateful for that and, and the award, this is the World Food Prize, Norman Borlaug Award for Field Research and Application, endowed by the Rockefeller Foundation. And C.D. Glenn, who's the Associate Director of Rockefeller Foundation for all of Africa affairs and is based in Nairobi and is here, represent Rockefeller, thank you and please convey to Dr. Roden and everyone at Rockefeller our, our deep appreciation for this. Uh, I want to also uh, introduce uh, and be sure all of you uh, have had a chance to meet John and Janice Ruan, who are here. John and Janice, you stand up so everybody can be, you know, thank you. <laughs> they, uh, in 2001, on the 15th anniversary of the World Food Prize, you'll see a pattern here, um, we had a special celebration for Dr. Borlaug at the Civic Center. And John came up on the stage and we were giving presents uh, for him and uh, Iowa State started a wonderful lecture series uh, in his honor and John came up and announced that the Ruan family was committing five million dollars to the restoration of this building and we wouldn't be here today except for their generosity and leadership. And so that you hear us talking about that, that Ruan Borlaug connection, it's in our students. Uh, well, uh, Dr. Sanjaya Rajaram is here, our 2014 laureate, Dr. Rajaram. Yeah. And, up. That's it. Yeah. and that. So over in the other side, in the Ruan Laureate's room, there's a Laureate alcove, and in there are all the likenesses of all the Laureates. And, uh, and so, Perry, I don't know if you've seen that. You need to go over and see it uh, sometime tonight, Perry Atkinson. Uh, but one of the things I enjoy most is taking the new Laureates in and letting them see there's their countenance among what I call the all-star team of the single greatest period of food production and hunger reduction in human history. So uh, I want to encourage everybody afterwards, please go through the building, go upstairs. There's an incredible uh, uh, Buffett, Howard G. Buffett photography exhibit. Is Howard here? Are you Howard, Howard W. Uh, here? That's, uh, gee, after giving us, I hope he's not on the other side having to watch the video feed. Or we'll really be in, he'll take it back. Uh, and that, but oh my gosh, Howard's, uh, uh, photography is incredible uh, that so we have other exhibit and go downstairs most you know people all be in this but go downstairs and look at our educational exhibits and I was telling Dan Silverstein where's Dan are you where are you at some someplace uh, oh there he is back I was telling him there's uh, I wrote the history of human agriculture it's in 27 feet and everybody should go down and, and come and tell me what part I got wrong and what did I leave out so, but anyway, we welcome you to stay. We'll have a nice reception and uh, to uh, and uh, enjoy our building before you go off to the other side events uh, tonight. Uh, and that. So, uh, the Rockefeller uh, Award, when we got it started, 
we said we have to have a jury and we have to have who's going to pick this person and how do you get nominations. So we've got nominations from all around the globe of terrific individuals under the age of 40, you've got to be under the age of 40, who are out emulating Norman Borlaug in the field, you know, it's a field award for field research and application, out dealing with farmers and producers on um, that, and who have exemplified Borlaug's persistence, tenacity, and never give up uh, attitude. And so uh, we looked around and we said, who better than to have as the chair of the jury the only graduate student Norman Borlaug had, who was with him in Mexico and who's carrying his uh, legacy forward by uh, being the vice chair with Jeannie's the chair of the, Bo the Borlaug Global Rust Initiative out carrying on the fight against wheat rust, Dr. Ronnie Kaufman from Cornell. So Ronnie, come up and... <laughs> Tell us about why you picked this guy. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. It's always hard for a plant breeder to follow an ambassador, but <laughs> I'll do my best. So I, I, I wanted, uh, Ken reminded you that this was for uh, a young researcher uh, under 40, so I won't go all, all through that again, but I, I, I just would say, you know, there are many deserving young men and women out there, and they can't win this award unless you all nominate them. So please think of somebody uh, that's deserving and, and uh, give us more nominations. We're, we're looking for them. So, so the, just to briefly go over the criteria, candidates are evaluated and selected based on the attributes and accomplishments that reflect those demonstrated by Dr. Borlaug during his work in the field. Persistence, Dr. Borlaug never gave up. Innovation, Borlaug was a reach for the stars person. If you've ever heard him talk, he was always reaching for the stars. Communication. Dr. Borlaug could communicate with any person, in any culture, in any situation. We've all seen him do it. Quality effort in research, extension, education, application of the results, all important. Leadership, demonstrating leadership or other agriculture, <coughs> of other agricultural professionals, field researchers, and or practitioners working in collaborative programs aimed at reducing hunger and poverty and revitalizing communities. And finally, impact. Increasing the amount of food available through all the above, Dr. Borlaug was always talking about making a difference and putting more food on the plate. So I want to tell you about this year's awardee, Dr. Brom Govertz. Like Dr. Borlaug, Dr. Govert's collaborative work with farmers has made it possible for smallholder farmers in Mexico and other developing countries to escape hunger and poverty and improve their livelihoods. He's developed leading edge, sustainable programs that are transforming subsistence agriculture and unsustainable farming systems in Mexico and other regions of the world into productive and sustainable operations. Like Dr. Borlaug, his vision is to help poor farmers increase food production from their existing farmland. He's been instrumental in framing the Mexican government's major initiative known as the Sustainable Modernization of Traditional Agriculture, Mas Agro, it's called. In June 2014, he assumed leadership of the entire Mas Agro program, which, which has housed its summit with responsibility for coordinating the evolution of related projects in Latin America. Like Dr. Borlaug, Dr. Govertz takes it to the farmer. The component of Mas Agro that Dr. Govertz originally developed and has successfully led focuses on integrating technological innovation into small scale farming systems for maize and wheat crops while minimizing detrimental impacts on the environment. Under this extension style program, 
farmers on over 94,000 hectares, 94,000 hectares, switch to sustainable systems using Moss Agro technologies, while farmers on another 600,000 hectares are receiving training and information to improve their techniques and practices. Dr. Govertz has used creative and innovative approaches in applying science to improving farming systems, to focus on farmers as development catalysts, and to restore a sense of pride among farmers and those who serve them. Using cell phone technology and social media, YouTube videos, and educational events, his work has led to impressive achievements in the adoption of his integrated technologies by farmers, policy changes at the governmental level, and institutional alignment for the implementation of conservation agriculture. Dr. Govertz has developed a practical vision for development and promotion of better agricultural practices to improve farmers' incomes and livelihoods, safeguard the environment, and foster food security in the face of climate change. Dr. Govert's energy and commitment inspire those around him in the same way that Dr. Borlaug motivated and inspired colleagues, colleagues, partners, policymakers, and farmers. Brom, please come forward to receive the 2014 Borlaug Field Award. So, the microphone's all yours, your moment. That's it, congratulations. Thank Thanks a lot. And Ronnie, I guess I have to say now it's always difficult for an agronomist to come after a plant breeder, but. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I actually would like to drift away from protocol. It's my strong belief that norm would have not objected to that, <laughs> and also not Ambassador Quinn. So actually, instead of, first of all, acknowledging the generous donors, dignitaries here present today, I would like to say thank you to all those farmers that work every day with us in Mexico. Technicians, partners, staff, all those wonderful women and passionate men that make this happen every day. The 2014 Borlock Field Award is not mine. It's really your merit, your, uh, your award. Thank you very much. Now having said that, I do need to go back to protocol and express my deep gratitude to the World Food Prize Foundation, the Borlaug Field Award Council, U.S. Ambassador Kenneth Quinn, the Ruin family, Rockefeller Foundation. I also would like to thank the people in the state of Iowa, the International Development Bank, the Mexican government, state-level governments who have believed in this effort and invested. Latin America private sector, especially the, the Latin American and Caribbean Conservation Council, the Carlos Slim Foundation. I would like to say thank you to Tom Lumpkin for having me every day at CIMIT. <laughs> Thanks also to mentors like Ken Sir, esteemed colleagues like Rabi Singh, Karima Mar, Monica Metzalama, and many others we work together day and night 
for our sustainable intensification strategy of Latin America. And last but not least, I would like to thank my family for their support from a distance, and I really hope this big party makes up for all those parties I have missed while not being in Belgium. <laughs> and now I actually have to make a confession. Because some weeks ago, I got a call from Lisa Fleming, wonderful lady here at the foundation. And my assistant called me and she said, well, Bram, Lisa Fleming called from the foundation and I was like, oh, please don't call her back. Let's just wait. I'm so busy because she's going to ask me to accept more scholars from the foundation. <laughs> and I'm so busy and I know when she calls me that I'm not going to be able to say no. So please hold off until next week when I better prepared to receive her lovely call. And then actually Ambassador Queen called me. An ambassador, well, you were calling, you probably wasn't, weren't noticing, but I had the typical phone here and I was still typing on the email until you really said, we want to give you the Borlaug Field Award. So thank you very much. <laughs> so if you hear the drop of the phone, that was actually real. I'm of course particularly humbled to receive this award this year. This year where we're celebrating 100 years birthday of Norman Borlo. Norman Borlo was a man who inspired me. He was a man that really made a difference in my life. And not only because I was giving him a homemade marmalade every birthday when I had him in Simon. He was a generous mentor. But I also have to say that as a student, every once in a while I would duck away because if he would invite you in the office and start talking about maize and wheat, conservation, agriculture, it could take a while to. <laughs> and you were sitting there anxious to go back to the field to measure the soil moistures, etc. But frankly, it were wonderful talks. Julie, Jeannie, I really hope you're proud of what we're accomplishing every day. Because it's role, nor, uh, the role model of Norm his permanent benchmark of scientific achievement and excellence. That's what makes us get up every day to keep the long-term trials going in CIMIT. Long-term trials where we try out different management practices to find those that give high and stable yields, least impact on the environment, and highest income for the farmers. It's those long-term trials where we do the science that can be connected to working extension systems. And this is where I come to Dr. Hans Brown's Ferrari. Don't worry, Hans doesn't have a Ferrari. <laughs> but he always uses that Ferrari when he refers actually to Rajarant's job. Saying that breeding those nice weed varieties, full of potential, high quality, ready to go to the pasta industry or the bread makers, that if you put that on the field, it's like having a nice red Ferrari and driving it on the gravel road if you don't combine it with the right conservation agriculture practices. And I've stolen that line and I add one more. Even if you have a paved road, you have a nice, nice Ferrari, and you let it drive by a six-year-old, it's still not going to get the 250 kilometers out of it. So we also need those farmers with capacity, with access to information that can put that system together and make those varieties work. Therefore, to serve our clients, to work with those farmers, we have to strive for excellence every day. We have to go out to the fields and get our hands dirty, not only with mud, but also by working with everybody everywhere, trying to incorporate a lot of people. That's taking a risk. That's taking a bold decision about our research every day. And that's making sure that farmers minimize their risk by embracing uncertainty and work with it. We have to leave space for innovation and take away the illusion of full control. At least that's what I'm trying every day now to improve those conservation agriculture practices that help achieve the goals that we have set forward. Innovation is everywhere in this room. 
It's even streamed to the other side of the building. Potential is there in Latin America. Huge opportunity. That was confirmed by the study of the, uh, of the bank saying that uh, Latin America could be the next global bread basket. The, the region is rich in three of the most important ingredients for agricultural production, land, water, and natural habitat. It has about 28% of the world's land that has been identified as having medium to high potential for sustainable intensification of cultivated area. I like to think that the sustainable intensification strategy that we are developing together with partners can be a strong contribution to Latin America's development. Because we have today a decision to make. If we want to increase that production to feed 9 billion, there's two ways to do it. In a way where we deplete the national resources, in a way where access to information and technology is unequal, in a way where not everybody has the same opportunities and we get winners and losers. Or we can take the decision today of working together and making sure that that happens in a sustainable way, where women and men have access and opportunities in an equal way, where the production is combined with nature conservation and where we make sure that consumers everywhere do not go to bed hungry. The only way to do that is to work together. We need develop, to develop consortiums or groups that work together from different disciplines. It's not going to be agriculture alone. The agriculture sector needs to learn to put forward their needs and demands to the automobile sector, to electronics, to telecommunications, to computer geeks, to all that power of analysis. Why are we waiting? until everybody has a cell phone to think what we can do with a cell phone in agriculture? Why are we waiting until everybody has a car to think with a GPS to think what we can do with a GPS in agriculture? Why are we not putting forward our needs as a sector and make other sectors work to help them solve our needs, our problems? The future is not about generating data. It's every day more and more easy to generate a lot of data. What is going to be the challenge is to turn that data into information, to analyze it, to turn into, uh, it into right decision taken, taking at the right time with access for everybody that needs it to make the right decisions. Like I said, there's a huge potential in this room, but we can't feed nine billion with potential. We have to invest in agriculture. And I'm talking about investment and not about donations. It's about investing in a future because there's return on investment when we invest that money in, in agriculture research. Mexico has taken that bold decision to invest in Masago. That vision to develop and create those, opportunity, those opportunities, committing resources to adapt and replicate a model that works and that we can apply everywhere. Applied scientific research achieves impacts. We develop innovation networks or hubs like I like to call them. We need more hands to do a better job. And I'm inviting all of you to join us in that journey. Because it's the best recognition of Dr. Borlaug's legacy to be conscious and shout out loud that farming is the future. It's our moral duty as researchers to bring pride back to the fields by harnessing the existing innovations of farmers and the other value chain actors, and by fostering capacity and application of science and technology. We have to make agriculture attractive everywhere. When I talk to a younger, young crowd, let's make it back sexy and change lives every day. I'm certain that we can work together. If we tap into the huge potential that you all represent here in the room, and if we take that potential to the farmer, but rather than that, if we work with the farmer, innovate with the farmer, catalyze together with the farmer the whole value chain, we can make a big change. We can overcome the challenge ahead of us. Let us inspire for innovation. Let us inspire for intensification. 
Or like Norm would say, reach for the stars and you will catch some stardust. Thank you very much. So the idea is that with this award that we would identify individuals from that next generation who are going to be the leaders of this effort. And it's pretty clear to me that we really hit the target with you, Dr. Govertz. You were so incredibly inspiring and you are clearly one of the leaders of the next generation. Well, well.